Good morning and welcome to this week's View in Africa. On Monday 30th July, the international community celebrates International Trafficking Day. Uh, the day marks um, the crime of human trafficking, which is a crime that, uh, and, and, and I've put the definition of the crime of trafficking as it's defined in the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking in persons, which looks at how people are recruited, transported, transferred, harbored, and or received, uh, usually by the means of a threat or use of force and other means of coercion. Um, and these individuals, uh, either through fraud or abduction or deception, are people who are, uh, who are quite vulnerable and then are treated as such. Often in today's world, this means that they find themselves in forced labor or they are forced into prostitution. At the last count, over 27 million people in the world are considered to be currently in a state of trafficking. That means there have been other people before and there likely are to be more people who could be trafficked. One of the main concerns at the moment in the conversation around dealing with uh, increase in migration is that the focus has been on preventing people from migrating and particularly on preventing the smuggling of persons. The, the challenge, however, has been that the global response has not uh, focused as much on trafficking in persons as it should, and invariably this puts people who are already vulnerable um, at greater risk of being trafficked, but also increases their vulnerability. Today, I'm going to speak about not only the, the crime of trafficking in persons, but how the world should respond to it. I'm going to focus on transborder trafficking, so I will not focus on trafficking in country. I'm going to focus more on uh, trafficking across the borders, as that is the trafficking that unfortunately across the African continent and elsewhere in the world remains on the increase and remains harder to detect. I'll focus also on what responses there can be that go beyond the law enforcement responses, uh, but I will itemize some of the ways in which uh, law enforcement ought to act. The reason that focusing on law enforcement is important is because ultimately the trafficking in persons is a crime and a criminal justice response to trafficking in persons is not only important, but it is one of the best ways in order to arrest the problem. Because of the nature of trafficking, which is in many ways a clandestine offense where people are either um, themselves ill-informed about what it is that they will be trafficked for, um, or they think that they are simply being transported across the borders. So a lot of the victims of trafficking believe that they are being smuggled across borders. Um, there's very little in terms of actual detection. One of the things um, that has been particularly uh, of concern uh, in recent years is the ways in which the crime of trafficking intersects with a range of other crimes. So not only smuggling, but also the trafficking in drugs, uh, as well as the smuggling of drugs and other illegal activity across borders. This makes it a huge challenge for law enforcement to be able to actually detect what is otherwise a specialized offense. The global response has focused on the vulnerability of the people themselves. Usually they are women or children that are trafficked um, and it has aimed to at least uh, ensure that people are educated about uh, some of the risks when it comes to trafficking. Unfortunately, because people still will want to be on the move and want to be transported across borders, there isn't always that distinction between uh, unlawful uh, crossing of borders and the crime of trafficking itself. The second challenge that comes is that dealing with trafficking, at least from a law enforcement point of view, has often been left to specialized units within a criminal investigation or police units. 
uh, the problem with that is that trafficking doesn't just happen at the border. Trafficking starts in the cities and the places in which people reside, and often the police officers in those regions do not have the training that is needed to be able to effectively detect uh, recognize and then later on be able to investigate, record and uh, deal with the issues of trafficking. Uh, one of the recommendations that we make in a globalized response to trafficking is that more police officers, uh, social workers, people working within departments of home affairs, for example, uh, related to registration of people, but also from a statistical point of view, that they also not only understand the definition of trafficking, but they are able to recognize it uh, in the cities even before people make their way to the borders. By doing this and by ensuring that as many people understand how trafficking happens, starting from the recruitment of people to their transportation and their transfer, you're able then to have a full scope in terms of the, the actual route that people take but also some of the related offenses that come with trafficking. For example, a lot of the women that are trafficked find themselves in situations of forced labor, but also find themselves possibly in prostitution as well. So in understanding that the conditions of employment of people um, are also fully regulated and understood, that means engaging with departments of labor at local level, but also having open communication channels between the various departments of labor to be able to have a full understanding of where people are employed and how they're employed helps to protect particularly women and children who find themselves in these circumstances. What needs to happen across the board be it at a law enforcement level, or be it in the various departments, Department of Home Affairs, Department of Labor, uh, Department of Social Affairs, for example, is that they need to first be able to recognize trafficking. Second, they need to be able to, once they have recognized that trafficking could be happening within their cities or within rural areas or at the borders, that they are able to communicate clearly to law enforcement so that they can be able to investigate um, what is going on and that they can be able to speak to the people who are either victims of trafficking or even those who are part of the trafficking rings or networks to be able to trace where it starts the, the route and ultimately also where people are being sent to and then to be able to record um, what is going on and then to be able to have open channels of communication that allow for better coordination. Because of the cross-border nature of trafficking, it's important that this be not limited to one country or one region. The level of training that, for example, um, South African police services receive ought to be similar levels of training in neighboring countries, be they Zimbabwe, Mozambique, uh, Swaziland, Lesotho, Botswana, but also beyond the region. In other regions of the world, like in North Africa, where we have seen uh, an unfortunate increase, not only in the smuggling of people, but also in the trafficking of persons, it's important that those regions also have a harmonized way in which they detect and are able to respond to trafficking. The next thing beyond having a similar baseline from which people operate is then that um, they are able to not only coordinate responses, but also that they have the right level of technical cooperation. Often it's important that this be by way of bilateral or multilateral agreements that go beyond uh, the international framework that is contained in the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish trafficking. That means that countries then are able to communicate uh, on some of the methods that are being used locally um, to their neighboring countries, but also that they're able to have a proper exchange of information. Ultimately, the best way to respond to trafficking is by knowing the, the, the nature of the crime and by being able to effectively communicate that. 
the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, together with the International Organization on Migration, deal with various aspects related to, to trafficking of persons, and they serve as good portals of information to be able to, to, to get the right amount of information on some of the emerging trends on trafficking. The fact that at the moment we have over 27 million people that are in various forms of trafficking is completely unacceptable. And the need for there to be an, a, a global response that looks to some of the national realities, but also that responds to some of the regional concerns uh, could not be more important. When we have conversations about migration, for example, um, it shouldn't be uh, to exclude those people who are considered to be most vulnerable, the victims of trafficking, uh, invariably women and children, because ultimately, if those people's concerns are not dealt with, we, we haven't fully addressed some of the concerns around dealing with migration at a global scale.